nice cork here again. So I realized that when I was making these videos that I completely skipped over what the dead zone is and how the mechanics of the uh, dead zone can work in your favor or um, work against you. So today we're going to be talking about the dead zone, going over what it is. Then we're going to talk about um, how to manipulate your own dead zone and how to stop other players from exploiting your dead zone against you. And then finally, just to get into a little bit more complicated material, we're going to talk about what melee weaving is. I'm going to show you an example of melee weaving. Um, it gets kind of overly complicated, I think, when people are trying to explain what it is. But on the surface, it's very simple what it is. And you can, you're, as you're leveling and controlling your character, you're going to be melee weaving all the time. And you wouldn't even know to call that melee weaving. So to start off with, I'm going to demonstrate what the dead zone is. So from five yards away, up to five yards away, you can use melee attacks. Meaning that with this creature here, I can use melee abilities. And if I'm farther than eight yards away, I can shoot the target. However, if I'm between five and eight yards away, I'm too close to attack my gun and I'm too far away to use a melee ability. So this is what we call the dead zone. And it's a point, it's a position where you can't use melee abilities or use auto attacks. So that's the basics of the dead zone. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you get stuck in this position, you're not doing anything useful. And so as a hunter, you want to be prioritizing not being in the dead zone, obviously. So I'm, I know that the dead zone doesn't exist in retail. Wow. So it might be confusing at first, but it's not an overly complicated concept, so we're just going to move on. Now, something that... When you create a hunter character and you load into the world, you are being set up for failure. And you're going to have a very corrupted... You're going to have a bastardized conception of what movement means. Because when you load into the game, movement looks like something like this. You can move forward. You run at full movement speed. You can move backwards and you backpedal at reduced movement speed. If you want to turn left, you turn and run forward, just using the arrow keys. If you want to turn right, you turn and move forward. So this is how the game introduces you to movement. And what, it, what it's telling you incorrectly is that Moving forwards is always the quickest way to get from place A to place B. And you're primed to always be moving forwards and not use your other directionality. This is important because for a hunter, because the dead zone, to get out of your dead zone, I'll show you an example. The game is telling me that if I'm too close to auto attack, I should walk backwards. Because based on the game's keybinds, to turn around, I'd have to use my arrows to turn around, move backwards, turn around again. But this is not the way you should be managing your dead zone. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you what, like how to use your own keybinds. You're going to have to do what's comfortable for you. But what I do is I hold down both my mouse buttons to move forward. And by moving my mouse... I can rotate my character instantly. In fact, I can turn my camera and hold down both my mouse buttons and instantly turn. So I can get in and out of my dead zone quickly by turning instantly and moving at a fast movement speed the whole time. I put on Cheetah to show that. Now this is better. I can turn instantly to move in and out of my dead zone, but I'm still having to turn my character. Now there's Something that you'll find in your, your key bindings menu called strafing. And I'll show you what strafing is. So rather than turning like this, you can move left or right by using left strafe or right strafe. And the important thing about strafing is that you run at full movement speed, like you're running forwards, but back and forth. So by manipulating your camera and your strafe, you saw me kiting in my first video where I was strafing backwards and shooting. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I can begin attacking. I can strafe. 
can shoot. And I'm kiting backwards by strafing. And I'm running at full movement speed this entire time. So you never want to be backpedaling because you're losing movement speed. Now, it's hard, it's a hard habit to break, especially because in video games the natural thing to do is use the back arrow and back up. What I do is I just unbind my, my back pedal key. And that's the best way to break your habit, is if you go to back pedal, you can't, and then you learn how to turn. Basically it forces you to use other ways of movement instead of relying on back pedal. Because it's, it's easy to say, oh, I just want back pedal. But when shit gets serious, you're gonna, out of habit, you're gonna wanna back pedal. But if you go to back pedal and it's unbound, you're gonna be forced to use other movement options. And this is very important because as a hunter, you're introduced being told that moving forwards is always faster, but you should be able to move in all directions at full movement speed by using the straight keys and simply turning your camera. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about movement and how movement kind of changes your perception about how to play the hunter class specifically, I'm going to bring up an example of a poor decision making when it comes to using your dead zone. And the reason that this is sort of a gameplay artifact is because this used to be very common in guides or in old PvP videos. And that is that when you want to engage with something in melee combat, you should run through them. And I'll show you an example on this bear real quick. I'll show you what I mean. So if, I, if I'm just standing here and I get into melee combat, you'll see a lot of people run through the target, wing clip it, and run out the opposite side. Now this, you know, I've accomplished my task. I've stayed in melee, melee range for as little as possible. And I've made the space, I've, you know, I've gotten out of my uh, dead zone. Now, the reason that people will do this in PvP, let me, my pet needs to get aggro real quick, so I can uh, demonstrate, is that, I'm per like, let's pretend that I'm being ran through. Now, back in the old days when this would happen, Someone runs through me, I would turn to try, to try to follow them. So they run through me, I turn, and then chase them. But the problem with this is that this relies on someone else keyboard turning. This relies on somebody else keyboard turning to be effective. And you never want to rely on another player being bad. And if they are a, if they are a poor player, they have poor movement, having poor movement doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad player. You're just not playing as optimal. Um, is that by running through a target, you'd have to cover 16 yards to get from auto shot to auto shot. So I'll demonstrate on this owl beast again to show you what I mean. I'm gonna let my pet tank him. Sorry, these hills make it for poor videography. I'm gonna bring it back to me so I can show you. So I'm gonna stand at the minimum of my auto shot range. So this is about my minimum. And to get to a position where I can shoot again by running through, I have to get to the target eight yards and then to the other side eight yards. So what you wanna be doing instead is straddle your dead zone. And what I mean by this is that if you're going to be in melee anyway, you wanna to get to the minimum melee range and strafe out. You don't wanna backpedal, you wanna strafe out. And so by going from eight yards auto shot to five yards melee to, to back to eight yards auto shot, you only have to cover six yards total rather than 16 by running all the way through the target. So this is just another little tip for helping you manage your dead zone. That it's better to straddle your dead zone by dipping in and out rather than moving through the target to make space. And this is going to be really important in PvP combat against warriors who are trying to hamstring you and you're trying to wing, wing clip them. Because if you enter into melee combat and they hamstring you, you're going to have to try to walk with hamstring back out to the eight yards rather than dipping in and out and with abilities like deterrence covering your basically covering your ass while you're in melee combat improved wing clip to immobilize them or counterattack to immobilize them basically you can dip into your dead zone immobilize the target and then strafe away or move away basically making the space while covering as minimum ground as much as minimum amount of ground as possible okay so 
when it comes to managing your dead zone in PVE, it's going to be the the onus is going to be on you to control the space between you and your target, and it's something you're going to get very comfortable with very quickly. But this is completely changes when it comes to PVP, because good players know that the best way to defeat you is by exploiting this area where you can't do anything, right? You can't auto you can't auto attack with melee, you can't use melee abilities, and you can't use your range abilities either. So there's going to be a constant power struggle on maintaining distance between you and your target. And if you go watch my talent tree video, I talk a lot about some of the tools that you have if you find yourself in melee combat. Um, you never want to be in melee combat. You always want to be uh, at range. However, there's certain because it's a power struggle between you and the player you're facing, you're going to find yourself in melee combat. And it's always beneficial to be using melee abilities when you're in melee combat. So being in melee sucks, but it's not the worst thing. Being, the worst thing is being trapped in your dead zone. And you're gonna, the earliest experience you're going to get with this is Frost Mages who, who either blink into your dead zone or you know, slow you and get into your dead zone and frost over you. And it's going to be very frustrating because they're going to be standing you know, six, seven yards away from you. You're going to be completely helpless while they channel their frost bolt or whatever it might be they might be doing. Um, and I don't want to go through all the, your melee abilities because you'll have time to um, mess around with them as you level. But I do want to talk about two ways to break out of the dead zone that you might not think of that are that's going to be very useful. The first one's going to be Scattershot. And the reason that Scattershot is so powerful is because it doesn't have a minimum range and it doesn't have a dead zone. So if you find yourself dead zoned, see I can't use my auto shot here, target too close, and I can't uh, wing clip him or raptor strike him. But I can scatter shot from any range. And this is going to give you the time to disengage if you need to. Now, you, the four seconds from dis disorient from scatter shot is not a large amount of time. So what you want to be doing is either using it to set up a trap on the target. To set up a trap on the target. Um, or to interrupt something. So if a frost mage frost know is you. He's going to sit in your dead zone, and he's going to try and get the most amount of grace time to get off of big damage in the building. This usually means casting a max rank uh, fire frost bolt or fireball or whatever it may be. And you can wait for him to channel for a second or two, and then you can pop him with the scatter shot. So you're going to get the four seconds of disorient, but you're also going to waste the time he spent channeling that ability before you interrupted it. So that's just one functionality of scatter shot that makes it so important in PvP. Now the other thing is grenades and I, I usually go engineering you don't have to go engineering if you don't want to important to note that engineering you can make your own uh, bullets and you can trade them in for arrows as well so that's just another benefit but you get something called grenades or bombs or whatever you're using and these do not have a minimum range and they actually have a three yard range which is, which is the exact range of your dead zone or three yard radius I should say and so you can use these similar to scatter shot while you're dead zoned so you know, the dead zone means that your character can't do anything, but you can use consumables or items to take it to mitigate your loss when you're stuck in a dead zone. And I'll just demonstrate using an iron grenade while I'm in the dead zone. So it's as simple as this. Something for you to do, way to CC the target for you to get out of your dead zone. So it's pretty simple, just something to keep in mind that you there's some ways of mitigating your dead zone and good, the best hunter players are gonna be the ones that are prepared with engineering trinkets and know how to use their scatter shot to mitigate that exploitation. One last note about uh, specifically as mages or other casters who have like channeled abilities. When you feign death, you drop they drop the target, they drop their focus on you. So if they're casting a fireball on you while you're in your dead zone, right before it finishes casting, you can feign death and they'll drop target on you and it'll actually it'll actually interrupt their cast. So if you scatter shots off uh, on cooldown or you, you don't have any more iron grenades left, one thing you can do to jack with them trying to mess you up is just by feigning death and they'll have to start recasting whatever ability they were gonna cast. Obviously that is very situational and um, it's situational but when you're stuck in your dead zone, you're gonna be fighting for any way to break out of it. And that's just another thing you can uh, take advantage of is using your feign depth to drop targeting.
So the last, the last thing I want to talk about, the last topic I want to cover for today's video is something that gets referred to as melee weaving. Um, if you haven't seen my video over auto shot timing and kiting, um, it would be a good chance to review those because I'm going to be breezing past that to focus more on me what melee weaving is. Now melee weaving, when, when oftentimes when I'm trying to explain it, um, it gets too complicated. Like people try to over explain it or uh, pretend like it's some secret uh, functionality that hunters have that is not easy to understand. And it's very easy to understand. And you'll actually be melee blade weaving as you level without knowing that that's w what it is. So I explained that your auto, you have auto shot timer where you can move. I'll show you here. When the bar is wide, I can move. I can jump without interrupting it. And that's when you'll also be using things like multi-shot and aim shot when it's white because it's not going to interrupt the cooldown of your auto shot. So melee weaving is simply using melee abilities during the same period of time. So you're not interrupting your auto shot timer and you're getting more damage off. And the reason this works so well with hunters is that Raptor Strike does not share a global cooldown and it queues up on your next auto attack. So by using... by Similar to when I talked about managing your dead zone, by dipping in and out of melee combat, the wing clip. Instead of dipping in and out to get a wing clip off, you're going to be dipping in and out to get off a raptor strike. And this sees use in PvP and PvE, and it's just a way to min-max your character. And there's only one way, you, like, you only have to think about it one way. And that is if you can't do anything, if you can't use any other ability, and your auto shots off cooldown, Anything you do during that period is going to be a DPS increase. And because Raptor Strike queues up on your next auto, you can dip into melee range, get a Raptor Strike off, and then dip back out to auto attack range. And I'll show you an example of this. So I'm going to get as close to the target as I can, so there's minimum dipping time. So I'm going to aim shot. Auto shot, multi shot. Auto shot, Raptor Strike and it was parried, but you get the idea. And by moving and dipping in and strafing out, and this time I'm gonna do it because these mobs have low HP, so I'm not, you're not really seeing the full thing. I'm gonna mix it up and just show you how to use it without clipping. So I'm gonna get close to my target. I'm gonna multi-shot. Gonna get my next auto off. I'm gonna Raptor Strike, strafe out, auto shot, aim shot. Now. Similar to my rotation guide, I'm showing you the building blocks of how to do it. And if you stick to the principles of it not clipping as much as possible, melee weaving comes naturally. And the most use you're going to get out of it is in dungeons, where there's fewer mechanics that you have to avoid. Because you can dip, you, you can dip in and out of melee combat without having to worry about you know, avoiding mechanics. Now in raids, there are certain encounters where you can do this, where your positional awareness doesn't have to be as high. And so you can afford to be close in melee range. But it's very limited because most of the time you're going to want to be in a safe position to avoid certain mechanics or um, where it would be dangerous to be dipping in and out of melee combat. Um, so that's just a brief primer on melee weaving, what it is. Just stick to the principle that while your auto shot timer is reloading and your aim shot and multi shot are on cooldown, Anything you can be doing during that time period is a DPS increase. And so there's, I'll link a little, uh, I'll put a link in the description of someone who really goes into uh, melee weaving and the idea of playing, that when you're playing a hunter, you can kind of fulfill like an Aragorn type of role where you have a bow, but you also have a sword. So you can take advantage of the fact that you have melee damaging abilities um, by using them when you can't be using any of the other ranged abilities. That's pretty much all there is to it. Of course, you can get really, really fancy with this. Um, and it's just another way to min-max your character. Um, I also prefer using two-handed weapons as a hunter because similar to having a slow ranged weapon, having a slow two-handed weapon means that the less connection I have with the target, the more I can maintain damage because my damage is going to be coming in big bulks. So when, here I'm using Barbarous Blade. That means that while I'm melee weaving and I dip in for a raptor strike, I'm going to be doing more bulk damage. So with faster, with dueling or with faster weapons, uh, because you can't afford to be me melee weaving off every melee auto attack, 
the way you maximize the damage during melee weaving is using a slow weapon. Similar to how you want to use a slow weapon while you're kiting, because you can remove more to get the full damage because there's more there's more of a grace period, there's more of a cooldown period. Um, I hope that makes sense. Of course, if you want to get more into melee weaving, I encourage you to check out the link. Um, while you're leveling, just remember that if you're in melee range, range, there's no reason not to use Raptor Strike because all it costs is mana and it only increases damage. And if you're in melee range anyway, you might as well be using it. So that's it for today's episode. So a brief word on Tarn hitboxes and uh, auto attack ranges. Uh, it has been confirmed for Classic WoW that Tauren do have bigger hitboxes in Vanilla WoW. Um, this is estimated to be about two yards range. So what this means, you can see by this picture, is that I have an orc up here. If you follow my cur cursor, um, now the orc, you know, this is the standard hunter. So you could put knight off here, you could put dwarf here. It doesn't matter. And then we have our tauren. So the most important thing to note, to realize from the increased hitbox, is that tauren hunters do not have a smaller dead zone or a bigger dead zone. It's just been displaced two yards. So where the standard hitbox is from five, the standard dead zone is from five yards to eight yards, the Torin dead zone is seven to 10 yards. So the entire thing has just been displaced and his melee range has been increased. So this can be used to your advantage or this can also be exploited. Um, the most common, uh, the most common use you'll get out of it is that people that are unpracticed on dead zoning torrents will they'll try to stand six yards away so against a standard hunter standing six yards away from you places them squarely in the center of your dead zone but if they try to do the same thing with a torrent hunter um, you'll actually still be an auto attack range of the torrent hunter so while you can't rely on them messing up and uh, misjudging your dead zone it definitely is there, it's real, and they're going to have to make a conscious effort of uh, judging your dead zone based on the fact that you're a Tauren. Another thing is that Tauren actually have a larger auto attack range because the range is calculated based on your hitbox. So a Tauren could hit the same target from further away than an Orc because of this two yard increase on their hitbox. Um, one note about this, this will be the last thing before the video ends, is that Torn can attack things from further away, but they can also be attacked from further away. So a Torn Hunter and a Night Elf Hunter would always be able to shoot each other. Because the Torn can attack from further away, but it can be attacked by the Night Elf from an additional distance away. So the only time this range goes into play is when you're both attacking a target. Um, the Torn will be able to hit the target from further away. I also completely got to mention why this is disadvantageous. Why many people consider this disadvantageous, and that's because um, while your dead zone is displaced and it's not um, smaller or larger, it just means that you have to be at least 10 yards away from a target to attack it. And this is can be really annoying in dungeons or when you have a small amount of space. That there's situations where the tank might pull a group of mobs into a position where if you try to back up. Um, and like there's not enough space for you to back up to get enough, enough range. So just to note, this can be very annoying for Torn players um, in small spaces just because you have to be at least 10 yards away to even uh, auto shoot. Um, Torrens get kind of a bad rap as far as racials go, but War Stomp's really powerful and their, uh, their HP racial actually stacks with the survival talent that also increases your HP. So it's different. It's definitely different than the other races. It takes something, it takes some getting used to, but because it's unfamiliar, you can use this to your advantage. So if you have been dissuaded from playing a tour due to this change, um, I would instead encourage you to think about the possibilities um, that this this uh, difference makes.